Hello everybody, Dr. Ryan here. I'm a board certified specialist physician. Thank you so much for joining me in our 10th episode in the OSCE series. Today we are tackling something very exciting. It's called Jacuz Arthropathy. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, what are you waiting for? So this is the stem of the question. Remember, every single word in the stem is important. So what is this diagnosis in a 57-year-old female who presents with a chronic arthritis, negative serology for rheumatoid arthritis, and a history of rheumatic fever as a child? So she's 57, she's female, she's got chronic arthritis, negative serology for RA. She had a history of rheumatic fever as a child. Watch do you see? What do you see? Well, what's the diagnosis? It's something called Jacuz arthropathy, all right? And what are the features? Well, so first up, we can see bony erosions at the metacarpal phalangeal heads on X-ray, right? And uh, we see marked ulnar deviation, look, at the metacarpal phalangeal heads, at the MCP heads, right? We don't really see any synovitis because uh, the, and the patient's able to make a fist, so we know this is non-deformative. Non so by definition, Jacuz arthropathy is a non-deformative arthritis, which looks like rheumatoid arthritis, but with negative serology, often, you know, with a history of rheumatic fever as a child. Looking here quickly at the patterns of polyarthritis that we have, okay? So, rheumatoid arthritis, usually, you know, it's the poster child for arthritis, polyarthritis of the hands. So, it's symmetrical polyarthritis, and the hands we have uh, preferential involvement of the proximal interphalangeal joints, metacarpal phalangeal and wrist joints. It likes the elbows, small joints of the upper cervical spine, the knees and the ankles, and the feet it likes the tarsal and metatarsal phalangeal joints. C-spine and temporal mandibular joints may also be affected. Other, uh, you know, common patterns that we see is that of primary osteoarthritis. This is uh, usually symmetrical, can affect many joints, but here we see the infamous Hebedon's nodes at the distal um, at the DIP joint, the PIP joint, Beauchard's nodes, and metacarpal phalangeal joints of the thumbs. So we have squaring of the thumbs, involvement of the chromioclavicular joints, small joints of the spine, especially as a predilection for lower cervical and lumbar, knees, and metatarsal phalangeal joints. If you don't have this distribution, it's strongly fishy for secondary osteoarthritis. Then, in terms of our spa, which is a spondyloarthritis, Angst spawn loves the sacroiliac joints in the spine, the hips, knees, and shoulders. So the aortic arthritis has five main um, pathophysiological patterns. So you've got asymmetrical oligoarthritis, which affects two to five joints. You've got sausage digits, which is dactylitis, involvement of the terminal interphalangeal joints, sacroiliac joints, the rheumatoid pattern, right? And clues would be a family history of psoriasis, a uh, history of psoriasis in the index patient, pitching of the nails. Rachel's syndrome, which is reactive arthritis also, Involves the sacroiliac joints and the spine, hips, knees, ankles, joints, and feet. The patient also has urethritis and conjunctivitis as well. Just looking at the differential diagnosis for the deforming polyarthropathy. Well, rheumatoid arthritis is the poster child, like we said. But we also get our spas, particularly angst and righteous uh, disease. Chronic topacious gout, which is really ever symmetrical. The tip-off for gout is it's usually asymmetrical. Primary generalized osteoarthritis, erosive or inflammatory osteoarthritis, and jacuz, which is the topic for today. Okay, my friends. The book of First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 tells us, No temptation has seized you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you can bear. When you are tempted, he will also provide me out so that you can enjoy it. One of the great advantages of the new covenant is that now we are no longer under law, but under grace. Yes, we will be tempted. But, you know, I like to think of it like, you know, how you have these pressure valves, which has a maximum cut point. The Lord knows what your maximum cut point is for temptation. And if you believe it, God will never allow temptation to come into your life, which is beyond your ability to bear. And when you undergo the temptation, he gives you grace so that you do not concede to it. Amen. Have a lovely day. I'll see you soon with another handy video in this series. Hope you're enjoying it. Take care.